Hello, in this uh, video I'll talk about fractions, but uh, I found that it's best to avoid using the pizza example or examples uh, because they bring confusion and not using the same pizza idea in different operations just doesn't connect um, all the operations. And often students have um, issue with fractions uh, even if they move on from a certain grade to another grade or even to college. So it may as well to adopt a principle or a method in which um, all the operations are addressed. Um, I think that's the best option and let's discuss some of them. Usually we should address uh, these fractions in not in a formal way but in a in a way that uh, brings a, a language or a correct language for a, for a good communication so um, so the first thing is let's say um, we can just say for example a fraction um, different ways. Uh, fraction is, uh, let's say a symbol, let's say A over B, is A over B where um, A belongs to a whole number set, right? And B, be, um, and B belongs to a natural number set. So here, just starting this way, will help reinforce an idea that A um, can be zero. And when A is zero, then A over B is zero. However, B cannot be zero because uh, natural numbers uh, or counting numbers don't include zero in the set. Uh, a over zero is undefined. And this is going to be helpful in solving equations and, and um, or finding asymptotes and stuff. So, uh, so this is kind of the first idea. Uh, another idea is to, to discuss a fraction to be a numerical representation for a part of a whole, for example. And I think that's the definition that was taken and and we'll say, okay, just like a pizza. If I have one fifth of a pizza, what does it mean? You know, that there are five slices and one fifth is one slice out of the five. But uh, because that's commonly used, I'll avoid using that one and I'll stay with these um, other kind of tricks or ideas to present fractions. All right, so let's let's do an example. Let's just do an example here. Uh, let's say two fifth. That's a fraction, which is like two divide by five, which means there is a value to this. Um, an approximated value if somebody uses a calculator. Uh, this is one fraction, but it can be calculated, right? Uh, and two-fifth is considered to be a fixed um, or, or exact, or maybe the best way to say exact uh, value. And when we use a calculator, we will have to round this thing to, let's say, um, but here this comes up to 0.4, which is good. But if it's one sixth or one third, for example, and you have to round, then you will get an approximated value. And I'll, I'll address that as a move on. So, but what else uh, we can understand here? We can also understand that 
for these two fifth if it happens you multiply by five then you get two right because this well, I will get more to it but this is kind of some of the ideas we first need to understand looking at a fraction and of course uh, the top number is called the, the, the denominator or it may not be a number it could be an expression or something so uh, let's write it this way denominator and this is divided by numerator and if this denominator is less than numerator then this is an improper uh, fraction so for example one sixth that's an improper fraction and uh, I will talk about addition but let's say if you're doing one six plus five six um, that means that we will be doing one plus five over six which is six over six the fact that needs to be discussed here that x over x of course x not being zero is equal to one so six over six equal to one so when we do a sum of the parts for these fractions we need to come up with one right uh, so that's one of one of the facts so now i need to move to the idea uh, and another thing before I do uh, the operations here, another idea here is maybe call it a, a special thing that comes useful. Uh, if you have a, a number, let's say six, it can be written as a fraction by writing over one. Okay, so if you have uh, m or n, a number, uh, then n over one is also uh, an equivalent form of that number all right so now let's address uh, addition uh, and subtraction they use the same way the same method same process the only thing is at the end you add or subtract so uh, this is usually where I don't uh, use any pizza idea, but if somebody can connect to it, that's fine. But here we'll just say, well, if I ha happen to have two fractions, because it could be rational expressions or rational, and they need to have uh, more, but the principle doesn't change. So if I have A over B, and I have, let's say, C over B, uh, and point to the common denominator here, it's the same. We keep it and just add these two. So if this is 5 over 6 plus 1 over 6, as I did, then 5 plus 1 over 6, which is 1. 6 over 6, which is 1 same idea applies if this is subtraction so if this is subtraction nothing happens same thing the only thing here is that's going to be different is 5 minus 1 which is um, 4 over 6 which simplifies to 2 thirds um, the, the only work that shows up in addition subtraction and this is the one that needs more reinforcement is when there is the common denominator is not the same when the common denominator is not the same then uh, there is a video to refer to finding the least common multiple and use it uh, maybe I'll mention it here 
but the common way that you can always simplify later this is one of the ways is to multiply these two and do a times t here and next is going to be b times c well if this is addition you do addition if this is subtraction then you do subtraction so that doesn't matter right just like previous one and then you need to simplify the answer at the end but this is kind of the way it's done um, this is usually helpful when you have let's say one half plus one third then you don't have a choice then you do two times three is six one times three is three one times two is two this is five six but it's not efficient if you have one half plus one sixth you see so this is where we when we look for least common multiple so maybe i'll show it this way then you will find the six is the that least common multiple and in this case we don't need to modify a six it's just six times one and we don't need to do two times six which is 12. all right so since the least common multiple here is a six we just skip six times one and one times one however two needs to be multiplied by three to become a six so now we have a, a common multi, uh, common denominator which is a six and three plus one which is a four which is a two-third uh, same thing if it's subtraction the only thing is you do at the end is you subtract and you get three minus one which is two to six um, then you reduce all right um, I think the, we can do more examples for this but um, this is mainly for numbers same idea applies if they are expressions uh, you will need to factor um, and uh, and to connect with that here to show you for this example one half plus one sixth is if you change six to two times three you can see the two that's there the common here right so all you need that's missing is three you see that's why I multiplied by three and that's this happens uh, in um, uh, when you have uh, expressions and that's uh, we'll carry this for other videos all right so what happens when we have uh, multiplication and division well you don't need a common denominator it's not needed so if I have a uh, over B multiply by let's say C time over D then it's just A times C over B times D unless there is something the same that I can as well cancel right so if somebody says multiply for me a um, something like this then I don't need I can do it and see that I need to cancel but here you can see that this is where you can cancel and get this so for the multiplication is just straight over and it's easy to show with numbers now let's do division all right a over b divide by let's say c over d uh, this one is we change it to multiplication first but because they are not the same we will change as well uh, the second fraction to a reciprocal so this is known as keep change flip all right ad over bc so you're keeping um, the first one you change division to multiplication and you flip this second one so let's maybe show you some uh, examples here uh, which is helpful to just do let's say uh, play just let's say with one half plus one half right uh, so we know now 
we don't do four, we keep uh, the same denominator and do one plus one will give us two over two, which is one. So that makes sense, right? The half plus a half is a, a whole, right? And if you have one half minus one half, you just have a half and you take out that half, then it should be uh, a, a zero over two, which is zero. All right, now what's the idea here in multiplying? A half times a half is going to be one fourth, but what does it mean? Uh, let's see. So here is a trick. Here is the first fraction, this one. But let's change this to the idea that this came from division, uh, divide. Uh, of course, when you divide, kind of switching it back, you're not going to divide by half. You're supposed to divide by 2 over 1. So what actually this, what does this mean is you have 1 half divided by 2 over 1 is just a 2. You see, so if you take a half and you split it in two, what are you going to get? So let's do this, and this is half, right? Then you split this half into two, what do you get? You're going to get a fourth of the original, right? All right, so that's what happens. Uh, and this makes sense. Uh, when we multiply, we just do one times one is one, two times two is four, all right? So kind of now you see it, but when you have one half divided by one half, that's not one half divided by two, because usually, or someone will say, one half divided by one half, so that should be a fourth. No, that's why I did the other example before uh, to see that um, when you actually do one half times one half, that's where you're dividing by two. But um, when you do one half divided by one, one half, uh, I'll just show you here, uh, what happens is the fact that this is one, right? So, because these are the same. 5 divided by 5 is 1, right? x divided by x, x non 0 is 1, right? The fact. So, does this match the rule? All right, let's see. 1 half uh, times, you know, keep change flip. We uh, multiply by reciprocal, and that's a 2 over 2, which is 1. So, yes, it does. Um, it does confirm that everything that is discussed here is uh, is perfect. So I hope that these are the discussions we need to do and uh, take, for example, just same thing and work the different examples and take different fractions and work the different examples and and try to connect and help give this understanding for fractions because. Um, they are one of the problems or one of the topics that um, be, remain as an issue. And I think if we use, for example, the pizza principle and or example, and we can explain the addition or maybe subtraction, but when we come to multiplication or division, we don't use it. Um, uh, that causes a problem. So. Um, it's very simple. In addition, subtraction, we need a common denominator. Multiplication and division, we don't need a common denominator. There is a connection between multiplication and division. There is always that connection, right? Uh, and we just, we need to connect it and build it. Addition and subtraction, although they need a common denominator, the work is the same. In one, you add, and in one, you subtract. And the final idea here, of course, is to compare fractions. 
Uh, we can compare fractions by using their decimal values or by having um, the common denominators, but we need to have the same denominators in order to compare fractions. Okay, thank you.